Because you know, just the, the deeds are on the outside, but Allah doesn't just judge, judge the deed. What else does He judge? The intentions behind them. Right? Not just the deed, but the intentions behind them. So you may think you have a pretty good pile of good deeds, and then you take them before Allah and you found out they're worth nothing. First you're shown your deeds though, then they're evaluated. Once you get, take them for evaluation, they're worthless. Right? Now, so what we learn from that basically is, you have your deeds and then you have your intentions. And where are the intentions? They're in the heart, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Surah Al-Zilzal, He mentions the deeds, لِيُرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ In Surah Al-Adiyat, what does He mention? وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ What's the, Now the deeds and the intentions come together, now they are ready for evaluation. فَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ وَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ What's coming in the next surah, in, the, in this surah, Al-Qari'ah, is now they're ready for evaluation because it combines the deeds and the intentions. SubhanAllah, it's a beautiful progression between these three things. Okay? So that's what, another thing we learn in, uh, in this phenomenal surah. We know that the Day of Judgment is full of many calamities. And what, by use of this word, what we're learning is there are going to be a lot of things striking against each other. Now you, we just made mention of a car accident or a train wreck or an explosion. One thing strikes against another thing. Imagine everything is striking against everything. The sun is striking against the moon. The oceans are being rattled. The earth is being rattled. The graves are being rattled. The stars are being rattled. Everything is in motion. Everything's colliding into everything else. This is Al-Qari'ah. This can only be described. One of its very peculiar and powerful descriptions is, it's just a day of great clash and striking against one another. Now, having said that, the day of judgment has been described in stages. And in one place in the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, He talks about two time, the, the trumpet being blown, the horn being blown twice. Okay, once and then a second time. And then in other places we will see soon in the Qur'an, this Nufiqa fi sur is mentioned a third time. Most ulama tend to agree that the, the blowing will actually occur three times. Based on the, the ayat of the Qur'an and the sequencing of them, it will occur, this will occur three times. The first is this nafqat uh, faz'a. In other words, when Allah Azza wa Jal commands the horn to be blown, there will be terror widespread on the earth. There will be absolute terror on the end. By this time, all the believer's souls are gone. And when it's blown, then you know, there's all this chaos and calamity, wild animals are being herded together, and all, all this stuff is happening. Then another time, and when this time it's blown, death. فصعيقة. Everybody just collapses and falls apart. Everything dies immediately. Then we don't know how much time in between the two, but then there's a third, and when this one's blown, what happens? Everybody comes back to life. And most mufassirun comment that this qari'ah, this rattling noise that's being referred to here, which is another terminology for nafqat al-sur, this is referring to the third, when we come out of our graves. The, that final one, that's what's being referred to. Why do they say it's the final one? Because in this surah, we get right to the judgment. And how can you get to the judgment unless it's the third one? Because the first one doesn't lead to judgment. The first one leads to the second, second to the third, and the third one too. Judgment. So because of that, most Mufassirun comment that this is referring to that third one. By the way, other places, let's, let's make quick reference inshallah at least. The, 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 the blowing of the trumpet where, or, or the horn where there's going to be absolute terror is defined for example in the beginning of Surah Al-Hajj. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ have fearful consciousness of your master. No doubt the, the earthquake of that day is a huge and enormous thing. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ The day on which you will see every, every breastfeeding mother, animal and human being, will drop whatever she used to feed. Allah didn't even say she'll drop her child. He'll say whatever, as though it doesn't, she doesn't even remember what that is. And every carrier, meaning every pregnant animal and human being, will drop whatever they were carrying. They'll just go into labor and deliver immediately out of shock. sukara, And you will see people drunk. sukara, And they're not drunk at all. You know when somebody's drunk, they're kind of like shaking around, moving around like this, they can't stand straight. The earth will be shaking so much that they can't stand straight. Right? That's what's, what you're going to see them. <coughs> so this is the first one where this terror is widespread on the earth. 
Then we find uh, in regards to as-sa'iq, we find wa nufiqa fi as-suri fa sa'iq man fi as-samawati wa man fi al-ard illa man sha Allah. Well, and and it will, you know, the sword will be blown into and everyone in the heavens and the earth will, will cease to live except the one who Allah wills, meaning Israfil, according to most Mufassirun. Because he'll survive this one and then Allah will give him death and then bring him back to life. ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى Then it will be blown again. فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ Then they will be standing, looking at each other. So that's the second and third one is what's being referred to here. The first one was فَزِعْ the, the terror. And the second and third one have been combined. In the other ayah. Okay. وَقَدْ أَكَّدَ هَذَا التَّعْظِيمُ وَالتَّفْخِيمُ بِقَوْلِهِ بَعْدْ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَ And it said that Allah Azza wa Jalla repeated the word three times to let you know how heavy this calamity is. So the three times repetition makes it three times as heavy and emphatic. التَّعْظِيم to make it grand, التَّفْخِيم to make it heavier and to make it scarier. And just like that, and additionally when people come out of their graves, uh, they will be overwhelmed by terror just like these bugs that there, it's an image of chaos when you see all that motion happening at the same time it's an image of chaos and dis- disturbance فَتَوَجَّهُ جِهَاتٍ شَتَّى أَوْ تَوَجَّهُ إِلَى مَنَازِلِهِمُ الْمُخْتَلِفَةِ سُعَادَ وَشِقَى what he's saying is that they're going to be going in every which direction and eventually end up in one of two the direction of happiness or the direction of calamity and, uh, and sadness when Mabthuth min al Bath wa huwa tafriq and Mabthuth, the word Mabthuth, which is an ism mafrood, an objective noun, comes from the word Bath and it means division, distinction. So they'll be separated from one another. Even though they're together, they're also separated, which is an incredible thing. That on the Day of Judgment, we will be the biggest gathering ever of human beings. All generations of human beings are coming together at one point, and yet this will be the day you will feel the loneliest. You'll be the most alone. You'll be separated from everybody else. And this is described in further more explicit detail. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ Right in Surah Al-Mu'alaji bin وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِيهِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُؤْوِيهِ Right, so ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ Right, He's, he offers Allah everybody. He even says, separate me from my tribe in addition to my family. How about this? Why don't you take everyone on earth into hell? Let me go. He'll offer everybody else. Right? وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ give, give everybody else up, just let me survive. That's what he's concerned about. So you become completely individualized on that day. وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَلْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ And mountains will become on that day like الْعِهْن الْعِهْن in the Arabic language is wool of different textures. You know, you have, and when you, when you make wool in Arabic, you know, in, in, it's not like, they didn't have cotton really. They, all they had to work with was wool. It's not a society that had flowing cotton. Cotton was an import really. So when Allah makes reference to this kind of carding, usually it's associated with cotton, but in Arab society, the first thing that came to their mind was wool. So ayhin is used wool. And then Allah uses the word al-manfush. The word nafasha in Arabic is to card and scrape into fine lines. You know when you card and scrape the wool, it becomes fine fibers? And then they're brought together and intertwined. And al ihn is used for, for wool that is of multiple textures. And when you're carding, you know what happens? These really fine fibers, they start flying up into the air. They become weightless and there's this, you know, so you have to wear some kind of thing because you're going to get like, it's the dust of it is going to go in your, you know, kind of like sawdust kind of thing. But this happens with wool a lot. So Allah is describing mountains as this weightless thing that when it's scraped, it's almost like it's flying in the air and the different textures of it implied inside the word al ihn benefits us in that mountains are of different colors. But they're gonna be slammed together and scraped together to the point where first of all, there's this different colored textured dust coming out of them, just like wool, when they're scraped together, subhanAllah. And, so we're, and we're, being, we're learning that mountains will not stay in, in one place. This is a day when everything's changed. You know, in, in this dunya right now, when you do, do good deeds, everybody around you says this is worthless. There's no way to it. And when they see a mountain, the first thing to their mind is this is solid because their vision is that of what they can see they accept what they cannot see they don't accept but on the day of judgment Allah Azza wa reverses this and so the mountains become weightless and your deeds are now heavy they've been given thaqulat mawazin what an amazing contrast in this surah the thing you know what, what will be weighed there are different hadith and there are different texts in the Quran and sunnah that allude to what will be weighed obviously we know our deeds are going to be weighed that's obviously there okay the deed will be 
way. And we'll talk about that in more detail. Allah Azza wa Jalla, the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, allude to even persons being weighed. The Sahaba would make fun of a light weighted Sahabi, right? Or his beard, he can't grow a beard, he's just got one hair. And he says, Beware of his beard, beware of that hair, it'll weigh, it'll weigh heavier than the mountain of Uhud on the Day of Judgment. Right? So, I mean, there, there's alluding to a person's weight. I mean, even the Messenger alludes to Allah in another narration to a person who's very heavy set. But when he comes before Allah on the Day of Judgment, he won't weigh anything more than a mosquito. So, there's the weight of a person. Then, of course, there's the weight of our deeds. There's the weight of our deeds. And uh, some scholars even add to this the weight of our intentions. The weight of our intentions and our, our sincerity in our deeds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.